One evening, Percy was bringing empty stone trucks from the harbour. He was tired of his quarrel with Thomas and wanted to be friends again. He had had a good day and was feeling extra pleased with himself. He was so busy thinking how he would tell Toby and Thomas about his expert handling of the trucks that he forgot to keep a good lookout. Too late, he saw a broken branch hanging over the line straight in front of him. Whoa! He groaned. He tried to stop, but his brakes wouldn't hold him. Ow! He exclaimed a moment later. The branch hit his smoke box, broke away, and crashed to the ground. Percy was more startled than hurt, but his front was still sore when he reached the shed. It's your own fault, said Thomas unsympathetically. You should keep a better lookout. I have no patience with you. Puh! retorted Percy huffily. He forgot his good resolution and talked to Toby for the rest of the evening. Percy didn't speak to Thomas the next day either. I say, Toby, he said in the shed that evening. What's a drip? Do you know? Toby pondered. It's when rain comes through a hole in your cab and fireman hasn't got time to mend it, he decided at last. That's silly, objected Percy. I heard a boy on the platform call his friend a drip this afternoon. I'm sure he wouldn't have come through a hole in my cab, he added earnestly. Thomas was tired of being ignored. That's different, he interrupted. The boy just thought his friend was being a coward, or silly, or a spoil sport. Percy thought about this. So if, he suggested reflectively, if you stopped me from doing something nice, Thomas, would you be a drip? You're the drip, answered Thomas crossly. Now go to sleep like a sensible engine and stop talking nonsense. Percy was offended. Instead of going to sleep, he became even more determined to pay Thomas out. Next day, Henry's train was late at the junction. When Thomas set out along the valley, he was trying to make up for lost time. Suddenly, there was a loud bang, and something hard hit the bottom of his left-hand water tank. Ouch! explained Thomas and stopped suddenly. As he did so, he felt water splashing cold against his wheels. One of your side rods is broken, said his driver. It swung up and punctured your tank. We'll have to go and get help. At Fafakwa, Percy was shunting. The station master came up. Leave those trucks please, Percy, he said. Thomas has got a hole in his water tank. There's water dripping everywhere and he can't go home on his own. Percy was still cross with Thomas. I won't go, he said. Thomas called me a drip. Let him jolly well stay there and drip himself. But what about Annie and Clarabel and the passengers, reminded Percy's driver. Do they deserve to stay out all night too? Percy was sorry at once. I forgot them, he said. We must rescue them in case they turn into drips too. He hurried away. He found Thomas near the river. Everyone was glad to see him, and the passengers thanked him for coming. I'm sorry I was rude, said Thomas, as Percy helped him back to the shed. That tank of mine turned into a bigger trip than we expected, didn't it? Can we be friends again, please? Percy was delighted to a